Hello, my name is Paul Ludo, and today we'll be discussing on the document. So we'll be looking at the documents that you need to put in place before you start um, traveling all the way from your location down to Osaka. You know, wherever you are, the, the cost of transportation is a little bit high, okay? Let's say for myself that I, I stay in a quiet state or cross river, depending on my mood. Um, the, the transportation could be between 5,000 and 3,000 just for going and then going and come back is between 6,000 naira to about 10,000 naira. So instead of um, having that stress of traveling to and from your location, it's better that you have these 15 documents that I'm going to talk about in this video. But before I mention any of the document, let me read out what is in one of the documents that I collected um, when I got admitted into UNN. Now, this is my acceptance of admission letter, okay? And in the second paragraph, it says that I accept that if any time after admission, it is discovered that I do not possess any of the qualifications or satisfy other conditions, including entry requirements on which the admission was based, I shall withdraw from the university if and when I am required to do so. That alone goes to show you how serious um, not having any of these qualifications can be. Okay, so if you have, if you don't have any of these 15 qualifications, my dear, there is a big chance that you'll be disqualified. You have to withdraw from the university. Now imagine the stress of writing JAMA, writing post ME, and at the end of the day, you, you get yourself withdrawn from the academic system. Number one is your WAYEK, it's your whole level result. Only result is either NECO or WAYEK, okay? And some departments say you should have only one um, WAYEK result. Some departments say that you should, you, you should not have more than two sittings. Some stipulate that you have a pass in English. Some say that you must have five credits pass in all your subjects. So, including math and English. So, whenever you are preparing, whenever you're preparing for work, if you've not written your work, I'm sure that everybody that is watching this video right now has written his or her work. If you don't have work, at least five credit pass in all your subjects, we're talking about for science students, math, English, chemistry, physics, biology, then you don't have a space in the university level. But if you are looking for a space where they admit people that have credit and pass in English language, don't forget to check this my video that is around here, somewhere around here, or just somewhere around the screen. <laughs> okay, so um, that is the department and the schools and the faculties that give admission if you have a credit, a pass in English language. The pass, I mean, D7 and E8. If you have your own personal department or faculty that you want to study, try to look at the minimum requirement in terms of um, the WAYEK or the O level qualifications. Okay, like for instance, pharmacy, you must have five credits pass in chemistry, physics, biology, math, and English in not more than two settings. Okay, so if you have one setting, good. Number two in the list is letter of identification. You must have an identification certificate or letter of identification that letter comes from your local government okay that is how UNN knows that you're a Nigerian and you're from this particular local government and you're from this particular state I think they even use it for statistical purposes like okay from where and from where do we admit our, our students from also it is necessary for security purposes so if you not come back to Suka to start processing your admission I would advise that you have one if you don't have one so rush your local government try to get your letter of identification or certificate of identification the death certificate is your birth certificate okay now the birth certificate is the one that you get when you were born but um, most of the time, we found out that most of us are born with a birth certificate. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't born with a birth certificate though. I was born with a birth certificate, but um, as time goes on, because of the uh, movement from, my dad was a military man, so we moved a lot from Lagos to Ibadan, from Ibadan to Mina, from Mina to Potakot, from Potakot to so Enugu. And because of that movement, documents were lost in the process. So, but if you don't have your birth certificate, um, what I would advise you to do is to get a statutory age declaration. 
or well, they call it H declaration. Okay, so how do you get that one? You go to the law courts and then tell them that you want to have a you want to declare your age. So that is called age declaration form. When you're declaring your age as an advice, be careful because you know that some people go and reduce their age because they have the opportunity to reduce their age. Please don't. If you have to reduce your age or increase your age depending on what you're trying to obtain, be careful because if you have gotten your voter's card or if you've gotten your national identification number like your NIN or you've gotten any sensitive document like your bank account, it is going to affect your age declaration. So when you're doing it, think, okay, don't because you have opportunity to reduce your age, now go and reduce your age. My dear, it is going to affect you because if you are if you're 25 in NIN and then you're 20 in age declaration, there's a discrepancy and it's going to affect you a lot. So whenever you are going for age declaration or decla collection of your declaration, the statutory age declaration, try as much as you can to be as sincere as possible. Now, yeah, it, some people find it difficult to be sincere and you have your sincerity is going to be tested in school. It's better to say nothing than to lie. So when you're going to get your age declaration, my advice is don't change your age. The next certificate we're going to talk about is your jam result. Do I need to talk about that? Yeah, when you write your jam, you print your jam results. Okay, so the next one is what? Your Posuti ME results. Now, your Posuti ME result is the result that you get after you write your post TME. Yeah. So you get your Posuti ME result after you write your Posuti ME and Mind you, I've talked a lot about JAM and post ME results, so you can go and check my previous videos on how to pass JAM and how to pass post ME and how UNN conduct their post ME and how to get past questions into your post ME and stuff like that. You just go back and check my channel and see if you can actually get one or two hints on how to um, clear your JAM and your post ME. But as a warning, um, in case you don't go back there, it is good that you you tailor what you want okay when you are preparing like let's say you've not written your exams yet tailor what you want okay set yourself at a position where you would want to be now when you're in the university system it's, it's easy to get distracted with everything that happens in school the rush the hurry the excitement the euphoria the enjoyment the friends the hangouts the, the lectures the exams the test it is easy to get distracted but Keep one thing in mind, set a goal, set a target, like this is what I want for this particular course. I'm going to talk about courses that you do in your year one anyway later in my next video, but for this particular reason, have a target. For the next document, you need to screenshot something. Yeah, I know people like a lot of screenshots. Now, you screenshot the place in the admission list where your name is, okay? So you try to screenshot it and then star your name, okay? Screenshot it, print it out and then star your name and then write the department in which you are being at. It's there anyway, but it's just good to just be on the safe side. Write the department and then star your name and then probably bold the page so that anybody that's looking for your admission is going to find it easy to look for the page, the name and the department in which you were admitted into, okay? The next document is acceptance of admission form. The acceptance of admissions form is the one that you print out after you must have paid your acceptance fee, okay? Before you have that one, you must pay your acceptance fee. So acceptance fee before the acceptance of admissions form. So it's better that if you've gotten your admission, you've seen your name in the admission list, go and print it. No go. So we go to the next document. The next document is letter of undertaking. Now, that letter you have to write it yourself okay so that letter is kind of a letter that you write to say that okay i'm somebody of good character i'm somebody of good behavior and i would abide by the rule of this and that and that and i'll not be a nuisance i'll not look for trouble i'll not fight i'll not impregnate somebody's daughter run away <laughs> okay so the next document the next document is the admission notification slip. Okay, that is after you've gotten your admission, you've been notified that you've gotten your admission. So what you do is that you print that admission notification slip and then put it as part of your file. The number 10 document is the letter of attestation. Now that is the letter of also letter of recommendation. 
a letter that you get from your priest, your father, your pastor, your reverend father, your imam, your local government chairman, your counselor, anybody that can actually be recommend your personality as somebody that is law abiding. Anybody of that nature can recommend you for the university. It's not really much. It's just well, you can write the information that you want to write and then you give it to them for them to sign because what is important is the signature and the person involved. So you write the name of the person and the signature and probably the, the position of the person, um, like say local government chairman or uncle or pastor or something like that. You have to um, identify the position that the person holds in the community. The next document is a student personal identification form that they call it the bow form that, that one you get that one after you have paid your acceptance fee okay it is also called uh, the student bow data it, it, that is the information that contains your admission your next of kin the phone number your email address your address and some other information like that so it is, they will just give it to you after or before you pay your acceptance fee, they will give it to you. So make sure that that document is safe because that's a document that sometimes you use it, you use that document to log into your personal UNN portal to see how far you've gone with school. The next one is your JAM admission letter. JAM admission letter is given to you after you accepted your admission and you go to the JAM website and then the jam admission letter. There's a cost for that anyway. Just go to any cyber cafe. Tell that you want to get your jam um, jam admission letter. They are going to do everything. Just pay them the money and then you move away. So I think it's one thousand naira. So just you just pay one thousand naira, five hundred. Now they'll do it for you. You just walk free. Rather than sometimes you may want to do it and then you make a mistake and then the money disappears and stuff like that. So it's good that you just go give it to one of those cyber cafe guys and they just print it for you. After you pay your school fees, they'll give you your school fee receipts. Okay, so that one comes after you've paid your school fees. Like school have resumed and you've paid your school fees. So you now need to have your school fee receipt. That is one of the very, 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 very important documents that you need to have. Like it's very important. Every single money you pay in the university system, your faculty dues, your hostel money, your departmental dues, your everything that you pay, you have to keep that receipt especially if the receipt is obtainable you keep those receipts because one way or the other at one time or at another they might need that receipt there's another one called the student information form i don't really know what that form is it's different from the student personal information form it's different so i don't know how the document looks like because i'm, I'm in calabar now most of the people that are in unn are in suka like the friend i have collins is in suka so I can't really, I don't really know what that um, document is all about. Last one, it's like you need to have plenty passports, like plenty. You're talking about passport with white background, like 20, passport with red background, like 20, passport with no background, like 20, passports with like... <laughs> so have as many passports as possible because any point in your stay in school you will be demanded for a passport you're talking about cost registration library library card library identification form and stuff like all those stuff they will demand for passports so have as many passports as possible like many okay you even have a black and white passport like passport will be like cheese what will i be like oh what will be like <laughs> all right so thank you for watching to this time I'm, I'm very very happy thank you also for my for my first 15 subscribers yeah i i i was supposed to create a video that is supposed to thank them but let me just use a small opportunity to say thank you to all my 15 subscribers and i, I love you guys so much like you guys have given me the the, the hope that things are going to get better and it's it's beautiful when you see stuff happening and your channel is going forward and stuff like that thank you very much thank you please if you haven't subscribed and you've watched it this time please please i'm begging you that is the motivation i have it's, i'm not really getting anything from youtube for now but i hope that with your assistance i will start getting stuff from youtube very soon this case so i really need your support i really need your subscription i need your comments please if you have anything to say you can reach me on my personal email address which is letters to paulov at gmail.com i'll see you in my next video thank you for watching